ever since they were first introduced in 1.1, super flat worlds have been pretty plain. One block of bedrock, two blocks of dirt, and one layer of grass. Villages generated, and that was about it. And with just that, you could do a whole lot. But back in 1.16.1, an incredible discovery was made. New super flat worlds in that update were generating strongholds. This revolutionized the super flat meta, allowing you to go to the end and get elytras and shulker boxes. The only catch was that Eyes of Ender and Slash Locate did not work at all, so you had to find your stronghold by manually searching your world. But if you had made your super flat world before 1.16.1, you were out of luck. And when 1.16.2 rolled around, Mojang fixed the bug and new super flat worlds were back to having just villages. But today, February 28th, 2022, 1.18.2 dropped and forever changed the super flat meta. In this minor little update meant to just fix a few bugs and tweak the way structures work, something incredible happened. New super flat worlds generated in this update once again contain strongholds, except this time the locate command and eyes of ender both work. But the excitement doesn't stop there. If you import a world from earlier than 1.18.2, something amazing happens. That's right, pillager outposts, ruined portals, and if your super flat world was made prior to 1.18 with generations starting at Y0 instead of Y-64, you even get abandoned mine shafts. This is huge because it introduces a brand new item to super flat, glow berries, which can be found in mine shaft chests. It also introduces a brand new mob to super flat, cave spiders. This is the third mob spawner to be introduced in super flat right after blaze and silverfish. Not only that, but getting to the nether has been made much easier now because of the ruined portals, as well as raid farms, which are pivotal for getting easy emeralds and totems of undying. You no longer have to make a patrol farm or wait for random patrols to try and make a raid farm. This is also super important for villager gift farms, which are the best source of clay in super flat. Basically, this is a huge deal. I'm so excited to officially update my world to 1.18.2. Right now, I'm just on my creative copy flying around and looking at all the changes. And this also makes me feel a lot better about what I did to get my end portal back in 1.16.1. Back then, I edited my level.dat file with an NBT editor in order to get strongholds to generate like they were generating for newly generated super flat worlds in that version. But I did always feel a little weird about it. It's one of the more cheaty things I've ever done to my world. But now that I know that eventually I would have gotten strongholds anyhow, I feel much better about the two year head start I gave myself. I mean, just look at how much I was able to get done since 1.16 that I never could have accomplished without elytra and shulker boxes. I'd say that head start was worth it in the end. So let's say you're starting a new super flat world. Now that you don't have to start in 1.16 to get strongholds, which version is the best to start in? In my mind, there are two different ways to go about it. If you want to be able to build below Y0 without having to break any bedrock, you should probably start off in 1.18.1. The only issue is if you do that, you're not going to get those mine shafts, and so you're not going to be able to access the cave spiders or the glow berries. And so if you don't care about having to break a little bedrock in order to build below Y0, I would personally start in 1.17. You see, there's four mobs that have gone extinct in Super Flat over the years, to my knowledge. Rabbits were removed in 1.9, squid were removed in 1.13.1, axolotls were removed in 1.18.1, and glow squid are now removed in 1.18.2. And so, if you really want to, you could start way back in 1.8, get two rabbits to breed them so you'd have them forever, and while you're at it, grab some squid and name tag them before moving past 1.13. But really, the only thing rabbits give you access to that you can't currently get on a super flat world is rabbit meat. And as far as I know, rabbit meat is only used for crafting rabbit stew. You actually can still get rabbit hide and rabbit's foot from the cat gift mechanic. And squid only ever gave you ink sacs, uh, and you can still get black dye from wither roses, or you can get ink sacs from fishing. And so that's why I think it's probably best to just start in 1.17 and get the axolotls and the glow squid before moving on to 1.18.2. By starting in 1.17, you can get two axolotls at least, and then you can always breed them with tropical fish that you get from the wandering trader. And you can just farm up a couple chests full of glow squid ink before you move on to the newest update. Of course, there are other things you can do in earlier versions like broken villager trades and god armor and, you know, 
fireproof wooden slabs like I have from way back in the day. But again, I think my personal recommendation, if you're not super interested in going through all the different versions of the game, is just to start in 1.17 and focus on those axolotls and those glow squid. Anyways guys, I hope this video helps and please share this with any of your friends who play super flat. I really wanna spread the word. It's so much easier to get strongholds now and I think this is going to be a really awesome update for people looking to get into the super flat challenge. There's so much new stuff to explore and this is maybe the first update I've ever seen in the entire history of the game that actually added more to super flat worlds than it did to normal ones. Anyways guys, that's it for me. I'm gonna go grind some glow ink so I can update ASAP because I'm so excited. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.